I'm responsible for all the design. So on this one in particular, I checked all of the plans and calculations. In terms of complexity, this one is definitely up there. There's a lot of unique features on this bridge, a lot of, a lot of details that were, that were custom for this project. Ultimately, it's, it's, it's my name, it's my stamp that's on the, on the bridge plans and specifications for construction. A lug is a Lego user group. Um, all over the world, um, international, which is a group of people who come together that want to build Lego and then do collaborative projects like this. That Lego is creating and expressing in your own way. Um, nobody's required to build any way. You can get a set and you can build the instructions and that's fine. You can get a set and build whatever you want or you can mix and match any pieces any way you want. So it's just an open creativity of platform. And I think that expression is quality of life. So those will be the, those will be the posts for the rails. The Lego had what looked like kind of glass panels between them, but this will have, there'll be a steel pipe you know, running from here to the next post to the next post, and this will be the bottom of it. And then we've got a stainless steel mesh that'll go between those pipes. Personally, I'm a big Lego guy. I, I imagine most engineers are. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my, I've got two daughters at home that are 11 and 9, and they, they love playing Legos. In fact, I, they just got them, got them back out, uh, I guess it was earlier this week, and they're now spewed across our, our living room that they've been building with. Uh, so this is something they certainly would find very exciting to go, to go see. Just seeing what the city of Kirkland was doing as the project was, was just about to get underway. I know they had done a, a lot of work on Total Lake Boulevard, regrading it, and that was fascinating. And as that was coming along, I caught wind of the fact that this pedestrian bridge was going to be going in. I thought, and once I saw the, the design artwork for it, it was pretty clear that it would show really well in Lego form. But eventually we got to the point where we requested the actual architectural drawings from the city. Once we got those, then we got to dive in a lot deeper into the minutia and the detail. One of what I find really interesting with, with the design aspect on any project is figuring out how you can build it. The way the industry is going right now is to try to prefabricate or build as much as you can in the shop and then bring it out to the site to kind of mm -hmm. minimize, minimize field work and minimize risk on site. We had come up with a concept where you could ship it in pieces uh, that would fit on a traditional truck bed that would, would not require a permit to truck here um, and then assemble it into larger pieces here on site and then overnight in a closure take that big piece and put it into place. Those two little black circles at the bottom that's part of where they patched because they they built this laying down and then lifted it um, and that was a part of where it was uh, temporarily held in place from the end to this point was shipped out on a truck in one piece and then they actually were laying it right here that they welded this next piece to it before they lifted it up so but from basically from the abutment to there that's how much you can fit on one trick on one truck and ship it from Minnesota to here <laughs> without too much hassle. We were putting the two together and the pawns lined up. Not mm -hmm. quite right. They were building section D and discovered that they had everything off by one stud <laughs> and had to take it all apart and rebuild it, shift it over. I knew from the beginning that the two big challenges were gonna be the spiral, getting that to curve around and change angles, um, and the sinusoidal arches going all the way down. The rest of it I knew we could handle. The scale that we've tried to represent scale as best we could, there's some liberties that we had to take just to make the Lego work with what's really there. Because it's a loop ramp, it kind of curves around there. Um, that actually gives it like a geometric strength. So if you're out there, you'll see kind of a, a big concrete wall and the bridge is actually directly tied into that, kind of anchored into it. That helps take a lot of the lateral or horizontal forces so that the, the piers, those steel piers, mostly just have to take vertical forces. The obvious thing, at least for me as a structural engineer, I'd look at it and my first glance is, oh, those are arches because they're, they're curved, they look like arches. But if you, if you look closely, they're actually what we would call a, a veer and deal truss. Um, so it's actually a, a, a truss bridge and veer and deal means that those hangers, the vertical pieces going up and down, um, are actually rigidly connected at the top and bottom. So they, they're doing more than just hanging the bridge from the from the arch, um, but yeah, so those those serve to stif stiffen uh, the the bridge deck so that it can span 
all the way across 124th and all the way across to Lake Boulevard. Personally, I like arches, <laughs> so uh, this this one actually was my favorite. I was happy that that the the public and the council chose to move forward with this one. A, they wanted to put a bridge in here, and B, that they they wanted to make it a landmark attraction to kind of suit everything that's being developed here. I live right down the street, um, and we do our, my family rides on the Cross Kirkland corridor occasionally. I've been telling. My, my kids, my family's uh, friends uh, about this one. It's, it's very recognizable, it's, it's, it's a really big deal. And the, the piece that then really separates it is it's right here in my hometown. Uh, having a really cool project right in my backyard is really exciting.